after almost six months of procrastination, I think it's time to wrap this bodice up. After some preliminary adjustments to the waist seams and armholes, it was time to give it another try. So I have the bodice on now, again, now that I've finished my skirt and I can get the full picture. Uh, I'm noticing a couple small issues, you know, same as before, but now I know for certain that the waistband is coming up a bit high on the waistband. I think it's supposed to sit closer to there. But it is higher up and if I lift my arms, you know, it peaks out, which isn't great. Um, still having some issues with the bubbling around the armpit. I did take the liberty previously, uh, after last time, of cutting it down a little bit to see if that would help. Um, and I think it did help a little bit, but not as much as I wanted. Um, I've also gone ahead and folded over the top. Um, to see what it would look like, you know, once it's sewn up. I'm thinking the original pattern has me bag lining it, but I'm thinking I might not do that and just bias tape around the edges um, and flip those inside for finishing. It gives me more control that way. Um, and especially around these bottom hems, if I don't want to remake the bodice, uh, I can get a very, very, very small him and not take away a bunch of fabric uh, while doing that. And then I don't have to worry about modifying the bag lining to match all the modifications I have made post pattern to this. So, say hi Sean. Hi. Once those adjustments were made, it was time to commit to putting on the sleeves. So I have just finished putting in the sleeves on my bodice. Um, I wanted to make sure that these were good to go before I started doing any of the applique work on the front because this all has to get washed to get all the blue marks off of it before I put the silk uh, appliques on because as you might know, silk does not get along with water very well. So these are just little fluff puff nothing sleeves. There's an outer layer that's gathered to a little interior lining here. Uh, not sure what I'm going to do about the arm size yet. Possibly bias tape? Unsure at the moment, but they've just been uh, clipped to fit better. And they're just kind of chilling right now. So this whole thing is going to get a bath in just a minute. <laughs> So I have just finished sketching out my applique pieces for the front of the bodice and I got them transferred onto heat and bond which is essentially a two-sided um, interfacing fabric meant to make fabrics into appliques and now I am just going to iron this onto my silk, pray that it turns out okay, and go from there.
To complement the new silk appliques, and as a reference to the original art, which featured what appears to be dark pink lines, I decided to try my hand at a bit of soutache, a braided trim that was popular throughout the Victorian period. So I am now through with one of the swirls and the center, and I think I'm getting the hang of it. It definitely seems like I'm getting smoother lines as I go on. Uh, hopefully that won't be too noticeable in the final product. Um, so this was an interesting little experience to try and do. It took a lot of finagling, but I'm discovering that I think the secret to soutache is if you can get it to lay in the shape and then you stitch it down, it will go easier because it already has a little bit of a memory of the shape that it's in rather than trying to stitch it and the rest of it just is wherever. So I'm trying to decide if I'm gonna do this one next or if I'm gonna take on the little teardrop. I'm probably gonna do this one next because I am afraid of these, but going pretty good. I'm hoping that these won't be too bulky in the seams. So I just did the most terrifying thing in the world. If you're doing these trims and you don't have a seam or the edge of the garment to uh, put your dead edges onto, uh, you have to poke through the fabric with an awl and thread your trim through that. So I just took my corset awl and poked a little hole uh, right up here at the top and then had to take a big needle uh, and thread it through with that and I had to use a lot more force than I was prepared to emotionally but uh, I got it through so now I just gotta fix it and hope that it looks good in the end. Now that I have done the soutache trim on the front and it's all looking pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and start sewing the bone in. Uh, in the original instructions it has this weird description of how you're supposed to do the boning which is not how I'm used to it. I'm used to thinking of this as like a, a corset style where there's a, a channel and you sew it down and it attaches to the garment. Whereas what they're recommending if you can visualize it is the boning is like attached to the seam but floats within the garment rather than being sewn down into it. Uh, and that kind of freaks me out, and I know that that's what they said to do, but I'm just not gonna do that. I'm gonna do it the way I know and the way I trust, and if that screws me over in the long term, then uh, that's just how it's gonna be. It also says uh, to bone this bit, this curved seam back here, which would require... I think it would require, um, oh gosh, I'm blanking on the word, uh, spiral, spiral steels uh, for the flexibility. I'm gonna see if I can get away with not doing that um, and just boning the center back and seeing if that'll hold up. Hopefully it will, but otherwise I'm gonna bone this, this seam, think I'm gonna do the darts and then the center. I'm gonna do the center, the side seam, and this first and see where that gets me though, so. Onwards and upwards.
I would like to note here that I would not recommend sewing up the boning channels as I have. Because they're just being held closed by thread, a couple did fray and come loose, requiring repairs. I would recommend folding over the tops instead and stitching them down that way. After all the bones were in, I began on the task of the bertha, or the decorative ruffle that goes around the neckline. This began with the marking of the gather line down the middle of the rectangles, which changed angle depending on where on the bodice it would sit. The edges then gathered down to the width of the neckline and sewn on, right side to wrong side, which will be covered later by piping. The middle is stitched to keep it in place once it too has been gathered down. Overall of this will be a handmade bias tape in the same material as the accents on the skirt. So I have now made it through the uh, bias tape hell that I was just in. I did not film most of it because, my god, it was uh, a lot of redundant uh, repetition. It took me three tries to get to this point. I originally wanted to do a smaller size, but this uh, synthetic taffeta that I'm working with just is not cooperating with the smaller size bias tape makers that I was using. So instead, I have this. It works. It's good enough. I'm gonna move forward with this because uh, if I have to do that again, I am going to uh, leap off the nearest cliff, I think. In order to finish the bodice edges, a bias piping is made. To start this process, strips of bias cut fabric are cut of the final remnant of the pink linen blend. While bias cut was much less common in the Victorian period due to material costs, it suits me much better for the curves I'm tackling. Plus, I have plenty of fabric left over. So I have sewn up my bias tape and ironed it and it's all flat. And the next step is going to be taking my cording, which I have over here. I don't, whoop, I just knocked over a teapot. All right, we're just gonna put you back. So I don't know what the historical uh, adjacent option for this is. I know in history they had like linen cord and that's a bit harder to get a hold of, uh, and I don't want to wait for more things uh, to get shipped to me. So I just bought this silky 1 8 inch cord at Joann's, and I'm 
hoping it'll be fine. It should be. I don't know why it wouldn't be, except maybe it might have a little bit of slip because it's very silky. But it should be fine. So basically what I'm doing is sandwiching this in the middle and then folding this over and using a zipper foot and then sewing right along the edge of it right here. Um, obviously my strips are uh, quite large for the very small cord that I'm sewing into it, but I wanted them to be slightly bigger since they're getting folded up to the inside. Um, that way I have enough space to fold them over and give them a, a good uh, closure and a neat finish on the seam since I'll be folding them up to the inside and then folding them in again to give them a clean edge. So all that's left now is uh, sewing. All right, all of my cord has been sewn up in here. There are some spots I think I could have gotten a little bit closer, but I was really afraid of getting too close and snagging the cord itself. Um, I think any of those places will get remedied when I sew it into the actual garment, but I have just a little bit left over, so I'm probably gonna trim this off, cut it in half, um, and then sew it together and see if I can get a little bit of uh, bias tape to bind my armholes, which would be pretty cool if I could do that in a, a self-faced fabric. If not, I have some regular bias tape, but it would be pretty cool to keep this uh, material in, uh, going. And I am due for a grad school class in about seven minutes, so I must bid Noelle goodbye and get on that Zoom call. Sewing to resume post Zoom call. I finished the bodice by working eyelet holes into the back and attaching some bows to the shoulders. The bodice is done guys. Uh, it has been a long time coming and I kind of don't know how to like feel now that it's done. It was such an emotional thing for me to have to take such a long break and wait and it was so daunting to try and come back to. But once I came back to it, I realized that the problems weren't nearly as bad as I thought that they, they were and I would just kind of been building them up in my head like this catastrophe that it really wasn't. Once I put it back on, I realized that the, the shoulders and the armpit area definitely needed to be adjusted. I think the real secret was realizing that if I goofed it up, I could make another one. And as much as that would suck, I was never going to get anywhere if I was too afraid to even try and fix the problems on the current one as they stood. So I took some scissors to it, I cut out the armholes, I changed things, I sewed up the sides, it made a huge difference. And now I have a, a wearable bodice, which is incredible. Um, I think my favorite details on it are definitely the soutache trim around here at the front. I thought that that was a really fun detail. And I really like the bias tape that I did around the Bertha, even if it was a massive pain in the butt. 
And this was also my first uh, try with spiral lacing, which you can see here at the back. I didn't film the eyelets on this because you've already seen them, but I did do spiral lacing for the first time on this, which was really cool um, and has made getting in and out of the costume a lot easier uh, since I've tried it on. I'm not going to show you what it looks like on. I'm going to save that for the final reveal video because that's going to be coming soon. But I am really excited to show you guys how it all looks together uh, once I finish up with the accessories. And I hope you'll enjoy that as well. Thank you guys so much for watching.